years, years. Yeah, and your, your first DJ set was actually, you know, a bit of a kind of mistake, as it were. Not a mistake, but it was a, an opportunity. It was a bit, can you tell yeah. us about that? It's quite interesting how that happened. How, how did you know that? Oh, I, know, I know everything, you know. I work for electronics, see that? No, I have to, I have one over there, Adam, if I don't know everything. Then. Okay, okay, now I have to tell you guys that um, first I was a plumber. Right. So I always was into music since I played in band when I was really, really young. So this is really young because you started working at a club when you were like 14, 15. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah so you were, you were into music for a yeah, really Yeah, course. because before I was, like I said, I played in drums and, and in band and stuff, you know. And uh, my brother was a um, doorkeeper. Right. Well, not that one, but he chose the guys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the door picker, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Door, door yeah. Keeper. Uh, picker, yes. And the thing is, um, through him, uh, I had the chance to, to work in this club really, really early, so when I was really young, you know, when I was 14, and uh, yeah, when I was there, I picked up classes and making clean, you know, but I always had my eye on the DJ and the ear on the music, you know, and then uh, one time I go to the boss and said, oh, man, can I play a little bit, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then, you know, nobody was there, then he let me play, and uh, yeah, it started like this. <laughs> right, cool. And did yeah. it happen that one day one of the DJs was ill? Mm. He was sick and he couldn't make it. And that was yes, when you, exactly. was that the first time you got to play to a full Exactly, club. exactly. And, you know, I, as myself, it's such a life changing experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you actually get to play to a yeah. club. And it goes well. <laughs> you know, so I take it that went well then, did it? That, was a, that, that first experience. See, of course, it was for me, it's like um, spring in a cold water. Yeah. But it uh, was for my, for my, I didn't know how to mix, how to. to <laughs> Use the turntables, you know, and in the good old days they had the, you know, the tall hands turn turntables. There was the really old ones, not right. the tape. Oh wow! So, so they, they were belt drivers. Yeah, and it was like jumping like this, and it was not no. really easy. But uh, I don't know. I just did it. And I have my, my my feelings, and then I made cuts and blah blah blah. And then I was coming into it. Yeah. And then I started to to work in a yeah like like in a bar night bar. Yeah. Where all the people um, coming before they go out, you know. Yeah. And uh, there I start really my my. Teacher. So then, um, how long did it take you before you started to get, you know, really big gigs and move out from the bar and kind of... Well, I started in 1991 or two, I guess, and yeah, five, six years needs to, to get into it, to get some practice, you know, yeah. but um, I started really early uh, to work at uh, a record distribution, yeah, no, no, first in a distribution called Neuto. Right. Where everybody was working in the bars, like Ricardo Villalba was, Anthony Rota, Heiko Laux, uh, Sammy D, a lot of people, their big known uh, names. Yeah, they now, yeah. yeah. And they started this time with me in this record. Of cool, so you had all these yeah. people around you. Yeah. Was, uh, so I want to talk about that time in Germany. Yeah. This is before you started producing, you know, and you started to get booked, you started to do yeah. parties all around the Rhine and this kind of stuff. And how was it? How was the scene back then? So it must have been very early in the German dance music yeah. culture, yeah. you know. And, and you know, people like, um, you know, like Stan Raff and these people. Yes. Was he already big or was it still yeah. just happening? He was already big before the techno scene. Right, yeah. With this uh, um, um, off project, you know, yeah. and Elektrotestalza. Uh, what, what he was doing? As like a you know techno dancing, and that really started to was he a big name in techno at that point, or was it just you know? Were no, you there I mean, he it? was a real known um, musician party guy. So wow. uh, and then <laughs> and then he started when he uh, bought his own club in Frankfurt. Right, yeah. He he made the decision to to play just his music, you know. And then he gets really big, of course. Right? Yeah, and uh, I, yeah. yeah, and everybody was there at this time. You know? oh, oh, I loved it so much. So for everybody, it was like, okay, that's the place. You know, we do what we want here. You know, yeah. and uh, we dance our asses off. <laughs> Very much techno, you know, completely the, the tech, tech, yeah, crazy. crazy because it was so new, it was completely a, a new kind of music, and uh, the people freaked out, you know, just they're walking around like uh, it's completely fucked up clothes, <laughs> <you know, laughs> and the glasses, yellow, green, blink, blink. 
same it was the same of England. Course, yeah, yeah. Course, oh, yeah, it's good to it's good to get it from your perspective. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. so you then started to work in a record shop, didn't you? Also, yes, yeah, at the yes. same time. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. how did you find that? You know, in, how was that a big influence in the way you were? Did you find that was a big help towards you becoming a DJ? Because yeah, you're there, you get all the records and stuff. You meet people, and that was the thing is, I didn't have money to to buy records. You know, so, yeah. so I was there, and uh, oh, Monday, the, the new record, I'm gonna. <laughs> Going home and try to mix and make my mixes, make tape decks, you know, and uh, so I practice every day, every day, you know. And uh, I had no idea how was the future, you know, but uh, I just wanted to do it. And, uh, yeah, it's so good. That's so many great DJs yeah. doing just know that. Yeah. yeah. So then you started um, your own record label, your productions, didn't you? Taxi. Yeah. Uh, four years later. I also met Paul Brittich in, in this time. Also, he also worked at Neudo. Right. Yes. It sounds and like everybody over there. A lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of people. And um, yeah, we, we meet and we had a good chemi between us. And then we said, okay, let's do some music, you know. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he didn't have a studio or something. Just three things: uh, Commodore, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Uh, Cubase, and uh, we started to make the first tracks and. Low budget, it didn't sound really good, but it had uh, a lot of um, yeah, something to say, you know. Yeah. And well, the thing about the, the, the taxi stuff was it, it was quite musical, yeah. and there's always a good arrangement. It's what well, yes. when I listen to it, you know. Yes. So, um, as opposed to it, wasn't just drum tracks, it's yes, sort of yes, yes. straight techno. You always yeah. had, yeah, there's always a music element. Yeah. So, I mean, did, was that your influence as a DJ going into the production, or did you become? from the production and did, it, did that change your DJ at all once you began to produce yeah, records? I think it was a mix, you know, I mean, uh, of course with, with my DJ work uh, I brought a lot of influence yeah. to him but he also brought a lot of, you know, so we mix it up. The real gel. And then did you yeah. find that it, that impacted in your DJ? So once you started yeah. to create records, yes. did your DJ change at all or did it give you, you know, another perspective or? Oh, I didn't catch it. So I, um, I was going to say, when you started to produce, yeah. did that? Did your DJ style change at all? Or did you produce? No, no. no so it was more an extension no, no. of your DJ style. Yes, right? yeah. I said we, we always try to to make music. Maybe what I miss in a DJ set, or what would be cool to have to play in my sets. Yeah. Then we, we, we sit down and try to to make music, you know. Fantastic. And um, of course, it's easy to 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 try to produce music uh, like to sound all, all, all the people sounds, you know, yeah. but we always uh, try to do something else, you know, yeah. what we don't have at the moment, you know. Right. So when there's like a, like a house hype or a techno hype, yeah. we try to do something in the, in the opposite, opposite, you know. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. because otherwise you have so much uh, records that sound the same. Yeah, you know? yeah it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think we, we created our own, own style with Taxi. It definitely did sound like yeah. I remember the, the release. Yes. Yeah, it did. When it, like I said, it had that musical base to it. Yeah. It was different to a lot yeah. of stuff that's going around. So, you know, yeah. I'd say hand for that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, a next big thing in your career, your life, was you then you moved to Berlin. Exactly. And did, what, did you feel that you had to do that, or, or did, was it something you were just meeting more and more people for? What was the catalyst to you? You know, the Berlin? thing. Yeah, the thing was at, at, at this time, um, I, I had a feeling that I have to leave Frankfurt because um, there was such a big scene with Sven and Omen, blah, 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 and in this time I wasn't into it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I was going to, to Omen and party, but uh, I thought, hmm, I don't know, maybe I have to go to, to Berlin, because in, in this time Berlin had a completely other sound. Right. So, and I thought, maybe I'm the first one there with a kind of sound, you know? Right. And I think I did it. I was one of the first DJs that moved to Berlin, because when I came, uh, when I moved to Berlin, uh, there was nobody there from from other countries or you know, just right. Berliners, you know. Right. So you're the first person from that Frankfurt yeah. city. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Actually, that's quite a brave move then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I said, okay, maybe it's going to be hard, but uh, I do it. I do it. Yeah. Well, it needs long time, but I did it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. You then you then um, hooked up with Tressor, didn't you? 
stress over the beginning, yeah, because yeah. I know I knew some people at this time and I uh, played there one time and I liked it a lot and then there was the resident. Yeah. But after a while I was not so happy anymore and um, I stopped there. Right. I um, then I tried to make my own parties and then was uh, I meet this guy from Osgood and yeah. um, in the past uh, the club the club called Osgood yeah, yeah. in Spurgheim in Panorama yeah. Bar. And yeah, we, have, um, uh, we had a good uh, good time together. And then we said, okay, I'm, I'll be resident here now. And uh, yeah, then it started. Was that, so that's why I was going to yeah. get into that. So when you you hooked up with those and it started to really because that around that time you started. Uh, we were talking before mm -hmm. you got um, you started to get your releases. Um, Sat license to plus eight, and yes. then you start to do your own mix compilation with the yes. Oscar thing, the yes. Andre Andre Andre. Yes. And then um, you started to, you did a cocoon mix compilation. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. Was that the point where you really thought, well, I've moved to Berlin, this was a good thing to do, I'm with the right parties? You know, how did it, you start to get your, your own mix compilations out? Yeah. And, and that was, and that, how was your life at that point from, you know, from when you started? Did you really start to feel like, yeah, okay, things are going, you know? I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, things uh, was going really good for me. Even in this time when, when this Osgood club yeah. opened, it was amazing because there I had a chance to play how long I wanted, you know? And I think I was one of the first DJs in Berlin that played this really long sets, you know? So we must say, actually, we must say, Andre was famous at this time for playing really long sets. 10 hours was like a standard yeah. thing for you. Yeah. 12 hours, so yeah. so this was a, you, you were one of the first DJs to really just yeah because in Berlin it was not so I don't know now it's different because now a lot of DJs living there you know Eric Hado of course he's a long player and blah 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 but uh, this time yeah it was new and the people was like oh, he's playing like you know <laughs> That's why I was so happy that I meet Micha, the, the guy from, from Berghain, because he let me play, you know, he let yeah. me do my thing and I could completely uh, experience my, my sets and live it, really, yeah, yeah. live my sets and um, yeah, that was really important for me and for my career also, it's to, 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 to get the point in Berlin where you know, yeah. because before it was not easy because the Berliners was not really happy. Uh, Frankfurt, Berlin, you know, was always like a little, a little bit rival. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, then I just did it, you know, and it was yeah, it was amazing. Excellent, yeah. excellent. And so, um, oh, let's talk about today. You, you um, with the taxi thing, you put out an album, didn't you? And you and Paul toured around mm -hmm. Europe. How was that? How we, we had two albums. Uh, two albums. Yeah. You, your first album was about, was it 96? Was it the first album? 97. 97, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, what kind of clubs were you playing then when you started to tour like internationally? What was well, uh, I played in, in all over Germany and it was starting to have some gigs. Like, uh, I played a lot in Sweden in this time because I know some, some people there and they really liked also the tax available. Yeah. And then uh, I had uh, people in Istanbul, where I always played, and so it started to, yeah. to get here some people, here some people, you know. So quite small underground. Yeah, right? but I wasn't at Cocoon at this time, so right. it was just from from what people hear about me or things hear about the label, you know. And then it started slowly, slowly. The good thing about it is, uh, with me, it needs a long time, but it never was like from here to here. Wow, it's always quite gradual. It's still growing, but slowly, slowly. So a few years. A little bit more, a little bit more, you know, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm happy about it because you know what you build up for 20 years. Uh, it's, it's 20 years, well, yeah, 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 it's over 20 years now. Yeah. Wow, and I know we speak to a lot of people, it doesn't, it's very few people, it happens overnight, you know? yeah, just yeah. a constant, you get better, better, yeah. better, you know? yeah, yeah. like a good wine, you know, a good beer. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, it sounds stupid, we got better, harder, better, bigger, but it's not, not about this, but. Uh, I'm happy that um, still I get new people. Yeah. You know, it's it's still growing and get more people that they hear me or like me, you know, and or or hear my new productions, you know, and yeah. uh, that's why I'm really happy, of course. Excellent. So you, 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 you yeah, of course you have experience and you resonate yeah. in larger gigs yeah. and uh, things are excellent, you know. Yeah. What's new for you then? What have you got coming up? You 
Well, um, I have I work now with a, with a new partner. It's it's a girl from Berlin. It's okay. a really talented um, newcomer. I mean, What's her name? it's different to say Dana Wu. Right. Okay. Yeah. She's not well known, but uh, watch out. Can I say <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. No, we, we did uh, some some really good tracks now. One is coming on Oscult right. now in April. Yeah. And. Uh, then I do something for Platzhirsch, right? Yeah, and then we start our own label. We are in planning now because yeah, I don't want to so busy. And so, yeah. how, how it is um, how does it sound? You know, with your new collaboration, Can you give us a description of the sound. Is it different to stuff you've done before, or just? <sighs> yeah, of course it's different because the time is yeah. changing. You know, so. Uh, yeah, it's so it's terrible it's trying to describe it really. Yeah, it's, it's difficult because... You have to listen to it, you know. Exactly, yeah, you know, I like so many styles. The proof is in the pudding. Exactly, say, but yeah. the message is only, uh, it's always the same. Like also in the 90s, like hypnotic, deep, uh, spacey, trippy, just underground. Music, music to lose yourself. Yeah, to lose your mind. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. So, um, just briefly to wrap it up. Uh, what would you say? Could you give us a few career highlights? You know, like say say two or three things that have really you look back on your twenty years. Yeah. Ago. Well, you know. That okay. Was, one of the best parties you played at yeah, the Everman. You know. It's difficult to one, say. One of your the favorite tracks. There was so, so many. many parties, but one of them was, of course, the uh, closing from the old Oscar. Right. I was there, I think I played 24 hours, I don't know. It was amazing and uh, at the end I was crying, saying the <laughs> the club is closing. But two years later, uh, then I, in this time in the club was good close, I did my own parties in Berlin. Yeah. And there I had also a lot of really nice parties and then I remember of course, uh, you know, in Frankfurt called Love Park. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's big open air. And there was one time uh, Sven was sick and he came, I think, seven hours later. And I thought, uh, so I had records for a three hour set, you yeah. know, to build up set, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, starter set, you know. Yeah, no, and, yeah. Yeah. and then I got, we got a call, oh, Sven is sick, can you play longer? And so, hmm, look at my records, <laughs> I had so records, yeah. I said, okay, of course, you know. And then it was one of my best sets I ever played. So you start, I've been there myself, you start to pull out tracks that you sometimes listen to on the fly, yeah. B sides, and music yes, stuff, exactly. like, and then you exactly. have the semantic. Exactly, yeah, it was, been there. was amazing. And, These uh, superstar DJs, hey, you know. Good job, they got. Good job, they got. <laughs>